Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, my little degenerates. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, here. Back at it again for another mother in video. Ooh, we, ooh, we. It's that time again. We talked about the Summer Game Fest uh, from Jeff Keighley. And now it's time to talk about the Xbox showcase that they had for the Summer Game Fest. And I gotta say, I think this showcase is the prime example of what happens when you're a bit pushed to the wall and when you have nothing left, you go hard as a motherfucker. Because I gotta say, Xbox showcase was fucking dope. Alright? They pulled out all the stops and I was very, very impressed by this showcase. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but it was damn it was damn near near flawless i was like wow xbox xbox came hard so as like we did before we're gonna run through all the games from beginning all the way to the end and i'm gonna just give my opinion and give release dates so without further ado let's begin also by the way uh i also looked at the polls for this over at jeff keighley on on twitter his uh twitter uh, and everyone pretty much is agreeing on with me on this. So I ain't saying nothing that it hasn't already been said. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Uh, so scrolling down, the first thing they announced Black Ops 6. And they did, after the showcase, they did a little event, uh, a little like little preview event talking about the game even more and i gotta say i'm kind of looking forward to this I, I i'm not really into call of duty but black ops kind of gets me interested i've always been interested in the black ops series spin-off style games so i'm kind of intrigued by this they said in like the their presentation that you know they changed up a lot of the animations like now characters slide and and go on the ground and their whole body moves i was like oh that's kind of cool i don't know anything about the fucking story of black ops i don't pay attention to story mode so i don't care um i think the last one i i focused was like uh black ops 4 which one was the i think it was black ops 3 or 4 the one where they were like in the future tech shit so yeah that was that was kind of like the only story mode I paid attention to. So, yeah. But the cool thing about this fucking um, game and the biggest announcement was that this is going to be on Game Pass. And I was like, fuck yes. You know, everybody was worried if this game was going to be on Game Pass. I was like, more than likely, this is coming to Game Pass. And sure enough, it's coming to Game Pass, um, which I think would have been no brainer. I mean, you purchase this fucking Activision for like almost a billion plus dollars. You you better put it on Game Pass. Um, there is stipulations and I'll put it on the screen. Like what exactly is detailed. It's not as cut as dry. Like it's depending on what tier of Game Pass you get is how much you can play the game like certain tiers allow you to play the game for only the single player portion some is only letting you play the multiplayer and if you get the ultimate edition of course you get to play everything so again uh figure that out on your own uh but i will put up that shit on the screen right now but yeah like this is fucking awesome like you get to play it for free you get to play a Call of Duty game for free. And the game comes out October the 25th. I'm looking forward to it. It's coming on all the consoles except um, the Switch. Uh, but it's free on Game Pass. Oh my goodness. We we in there. We in there. Like day one. Free. Free Call of Duty game. That's, that's amazing. You never have to spend a full price for a Call of Duty game. That's fucking crazy to me. That's, that's so amazing. You know. Then we move on to a fucking game I'm excited for. Oh my goodness. This, this was like, the fucking Xbox hit the ground running. I, I'll tell you this much. They hit the ground running. Fucking 
Doom the Dark Ages. Now, we heard rumors about this. We already knew it was called, like, Doom, I think, I think, um, Year Zero or something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. So, I guess it's gonna be medieval. And sure enough, I saw the trailer for this shit. And I was blown away. They had a fucking, a shield chainsaw. And when he throw he throws it like fucking Captain America, and it th like slices through a bunch of fucking enemies. He's going through with this cool ass like skull bone gun and blasting multiple people with it. I was like, this is fucking Mwah. Doom is like the reboot Doom, or is this Doom Four, whatever you call the new Doom, uh, Fran games are fucking awesome. I played the I think uh, the first doom i did not play eternal yet but i'm looking forward to playing eternal right after seeing this like this is nah, this game was peak peak like ah my only like kind of like not even concerned but something i really want to put out is that i hope like after they're done doing dune that you know its software is doing a new IP or something, because these guys are fucking talented, like, like, these guys are some, are some next level shit, like, there's one segment of the game where, where you get a fucking mech, I'm like, whoa, okay, they're breaking up the gameplay flow a little bit, and then it was one where they was flying, he was flying on a beast, like, cool, I love shit like that, like, like, when a shooter or a hack -a slash try to do something else inside their games, like I, I fucking love shit like that. This game is gonna be awesome. Uh, I, I'm down day one. Gotta play Doom Eternal um, before this comes out. This is gonna be sick. It comes out uh, sometime next year. Oh, also on Game Pass, and it's gonna be also on PS5. So, P PlayStation fans don't have to worry. But if you again, if you want to play it for free. You get it on Game Pass. But most likely, I might not even get play it on Game Pass. I'm just gonna fucking uh I'm just gonna get get it on Steam because I have faith in in its software. They have not let me down with Doom. So we'll continue. Um State of the K3. Um Honestly, again, they keep showing this fucking game, and I could care less. I think this is where the momentum stopped a little bit for me, as when this game popped up, I was like, all right, this trailer was all right, but nothing on it that made me like interested. So it is what it is. I, I don't really care. But for those that are excited, cool. But no release date, no nothing. Uh, but the game will be on Game Pass, so there's that. Now, this next announcement had me like, what the fuck? Uh, like, this announcement was like, like had me like complete shock. I was in panic mode. I think the whole Dragon Age community felt, we, we were all in sync. Usually we're never in sync, but we were all in sync when this fucking trailer came out. The Dragon Age Inquisition, <laughs> Dragon Age, sorry, it's called Dragon Age, the Vanguard trailer popped out. And I gotta say, I was losing my mind. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, this shit looked like a PvP, um, player versus player, looter shooter. I was like, whoa, this does not look anything like Dragon Age. I was like, baffled as fuck and then the following day they came out with gameplay and i gotta say it actually don't look bad however i swear to god this franchise suffers from identity crisis and this is coming from someone who's played uh origins love origins uh thought dragon age 2 was whatever inquisition was the right step forward even though that was complete departure from origins this looks like an even more departure this more looks like final fantasy 
7 Remakes combat system. And I'm just like, Ugh. I'm like, this is not bad. It actually looked pretty good. But I'm just kind of like, man, like, after we come off something like Baldur's Gate 3, which to me, that game really, really, really showed, like, there's still a, a, a audience for these type of games. For Dragon Age Vanguard to just go and do a, a hack and slash uh, game was very disappointing. I was like, Ooh. but the gameplay don't look bad. I'm eager to try it out. Obviously, I'm going to get it, but this is do or die for Bioware. I really, if they don't nail this shit, it's practically over for, for Bioware. Um, say goodbye to Bioware. Uh, this game needs to win um, because it's it's looking kind of grim for uh, Bioware. Um, this game comes out fall 2024, which had me like even more like what the fuck. Um, and also, I think they, they did talk more about this game. They said that there's going to be like your typical class is going to be more of a linear experience, not an open world game, which thank god and christ because these open world games are getting a little too much and also the last game had open world and i didn't really care for that open world uh so that's good to know um they said that uh you they have a huge customization option which uh, again it's it's bioware i expect that but yeah their customization is gonna be huge you can pick through uh different story types like like origin stories like how in um origin you start off picking a character and then you have like uh your city elf or um like human sub stories and that's all gonna affect the, the store on um, the game they did say that they're not gonna be doing dragon age keep which is like the 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 little uh, online multiplayer, I mean, the online uh, save file feature that allows you to make decisions in that little save file, and then you can port it over to your to your console. They said they won't be doing something like that. Like that, they'll be doing something completely different. So all your decisions you made throughout the Dragon Age um, series, um, I guess you'll be doing something completely di different. Uh, the Inquisition, uh, you can still customize your Inquisi Inquisi Inquisitor from um, Dragon Age Inquisition. So there's a lot to it. Uh, you won't be able to control your party members. I was like, I don't know about that, but you'll be able to control their abil abilities. I, again, that's, uh, ooh, I do not like the sound of that. That kind of reminds me of everything I hated about Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, is that you couldn't control your, your squad members and there would be many moments in in that game where you wanted to just switch to your other party member and you could not do that or you couldn't tell them where the fuck to go and get them into position on certain things and it was just piss poor so I don't know how I feel about that I don't know how I feel about a lot of things in this game and again I just wish they had took a lot of love and inspiration from uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, but it is what it is. Sorry for that little rant. Uh, moving on, Starfield, uh, Shattered Space, and more. Uh, honestly, this DLC looks like Dead Space. Uh, looks like a creepy atmospheric type of dlc so that's kind of cool they also said that they're gonna be able to do like the mod support uh on consoles uh so yeah there's a bunch of new updates that's coming for the game uh and honestly for those that's excited you know congratulations i could give two fly fucks um starfield is a whatever game to me so it is what it is, but you know, it doesn't look bad. It, it, that DLC actually looked kind of interesting, but 
I'm not playing no Starfield. Um, moving on, Fallout 76. Uh, now, I didn't be finish watching Fallout uh, the TV show. I watched half of it. It's pretty good. Uh, and I can see why people are loving it. And this is a perfect time to jump into some Fallout. And despite however you may feel about Fallout 76, like personally, I don't care for it. Um, that game just had a horrible launch, but they did did like work that game to the fucking core. They they rose it from the grave, and now it's in a better spot. So that's fucking awesome. And now they're getting a new um, update called the Skyline Valley, um, and you literally can play as a ghoul now. And I think, again, that's kind of cool based off of, like, TV show. Um, the TV show has a ghoul. You follow a ghoul character. So, that's, that's dope. Again, I'm very proud of, you know, how far Fallout has become due to the TV show. So, again, it's a perfect way to get into it. It comes out next year. Uh, so, be on the lookout for it. And it's also going to be on Game Pass. Oh, actually, it comes out on the 12th. So it's already out. So you can go check out that update now. Or it's probably coming out. Uh, the Playing as a Ghoul is coming out in 2025. So check that out. Uh, next but not least. This game had me losing my fucking mind. As soon as I heard the fucking voice. Yo, boy. Fucking Ben Star. <laughs> oh my goodness. For those that don't know who Ben Star is, of course, if you know if you've been watching my channel, you know who Ben Star is. But if anybody who doesn't know who Ben Star is, the fucking voice of Clive Rossville from Final Fantasy 16, and he's fucking in a new game. I was I was worried. I was like, is he only gonna be doing one voice acting and that's it? Like he's gonna be a one and done voice actor? No, my boy is here, bro. He is fucking here. And he, I was like, if Red, come to me. <laughs> oh my god, I love hearing Clive. I love hearing um, Ben Star, bro. But he plays in this new game called Exposition 33. And I was I wasn't sold on it until I found out it's a turn-based strategy game. I was like, what the fuck? Listen, all you fucking losers, all you Final Fantasy old heads that talk about we wanted to be turn-based fucking uh Final Fantasy game. This is your answer right now. Tell Square by supporting this game that you want a classic Final Fantasy game. So this shit, the, the art di direction, the, the, the way how the character models look and everything looks so fucking cool. I was like, holy shit. I was like, wow. I was like, this looks fucking impressive. And the story is kind of interesting too. Like, you know, there's this painter that's constantly like destroying shit and you guys have to go and go and stop her and there's been other expositions to go and stop her before and they've all kind of failed and you guys are the new recruits to go and stop uh, the painter i was like this is fucking i'm all in like you know when you run across like the other exposition people it's gonna be some sad shit uh this game just looks interesting as fuck and it comes out next year uh 2025 uh on series on the series consoles and pc but of course if you don't want to purchase it it is going to be on game pass so again i'm 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 all on it oh it's also coming to ps5 as well but of course you might as well just get it on game pass moving on South of Midnight, or as I'm calling it, uh, Louisiana May Cry. <laughs> uh, we've seen this game before, but now that we've seen a little bit more gameplay, I'm sold on this game. Like, like when she started doing some fucking combat, and it was like almost reminiscent of Devil May Cry, I was like, 
we end this uh we end this shit and one of the cool things is that it's have like the spider-verse animation so like the whole thing is rendered in 30 frames but the characters move in like um uh, 25 or like 15 frames so like they move kind of like choppy and weird but it's very stylistic i was like this is fucking this game is looking awesome um i, I can't wait this this game is this game is gonna be awesome and of course it comes out next year uh and that's a running theme throughout this whole xbox presentation there's a lot of like games that's coming out next year which i wasn't mind because a lot of them they did show uh snippets of gameplay so i it, it didn't mind they sold me enough on the game so um yeah that's that's coming out next year and it's also coming to game pass so again if you do not want to purchase it it's coming out for game pass so that's all good world of warcraft the war within uh it's world of warcraft uh i'm not interested in world of warcraft but i will say um interesting uh, i will say it's kind of interesting to see that world of warcraft is now owned by warner bro uh, it's fucking owned by xbox like that is very fascinating to me but yeah, for those that care, like congratulations. Uh, oh, and it comes out um, August the twenty sixth. So have fun. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater or Metal Gear Solid Three Remake. So if anybody knows me, you would know that I'm a huge Metal Gear Solid fan like very much a huge metal gear solid fan but metal gear solid 3 is my favorite video game of all time i love metal gear solid 3 <sighs> and i gotta say this don't look half bad you know i saw the presentation that they had before uh after this and they did talk about like there is something that a lot of the re fans of the remakes have always wanted which is that you know there's a different style of camera um so there's two different cameras there's a modern camera which will put the camera behind your shoulder and then it's like they'll have the legacy camera which is like how the camera was in the original game and you can switch between those on the fly. And I was like, oh wow, that is fucking awesome. Um, I wish like the original game had the, um, I wish like the RE remakes games had an option like that. So to have this game have it is pretty fucking dope. Uh, but that being said, honestly, I'm still conflicted on this on this game, but I am warming up to it. And again, it's weird to not have Kojima on board with this at all and again another thing for me is that it is not like um a reimagining it is just like the first game but just with prettier graphics and probably like better better controls and i'm just like uh, i guess i guess but it is what it is uh no release date but it is coming soon to come like this edition or and stuff are out now so check it out uh sea of thieves sea of thieves is getting a new season season 13 and now you can play as villains your uh it comes out uh july the 25th so have fun see a beat fan and i've heard it's doing really well on playstation playstation fans are eating that shit up so interesting um uh finlock the siege of dawn uh it's finally got a release date it's coming out july the 18th uh and i gotta say i'm kind of interested in this game now that I've seen even more gameplay of it, I was just like, ooh, this is this is looking kind of spicy. This is kind of looking like 
God of War 4, hopefully the camera is not like completely bonkers like that game, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it is also going to be on Game Pass, but it's also coming to the PS5. And yeah, hopefully it's good. Age of Mythology Retold. That is literally just uh, a a re I think a remake or a re uh, HD uh, remaster of the original game so it is what it is I don't care for it but have fun uh, it comes out September the 4th uh, and it's coming to game pass so have fun now this next game <coughs> this next game has a bit of a controversy uh, but I gotta say I'm impressed Perfect Dark, uh, the remake or reboot. This shit was pretty good. This shit reminded me of Mission Impossible. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, Mirror's Edge and Mission Impossible had a baby. And I was like, wow. Like, this is, this is looking pretty good. I wish they had shown more gameplay. But for what they had, I was like, kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of sold on this. It's kind of like around my jam. Um, I hopefully, and this is coming from someone who's never played the original, uh, any of the Perfect Dark games, like, I hope there will be more of, like, sci-fi elements, because I do know that franchise has more sci-fi elements, like aliens and shit, so I hope it's addressed in this game, um, but overall, this looks really cool. Now, in terms of the design... Um, again, I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. I care about gameplay. Is the gameplay good? Is the characters interesting? Do I want to fall in love with Joanna Dart um, as a character? Is she interesting enough? Or is the situation she's put through interesting? So I don't really care about looks or anything like that. I will say, however, I do prefer her um, um, Perfect Dark Zero design. Uh compared to this new design it's not ugly like she looks like she's like she just looks like a normal like secret agent lady uh, but you know when you look at her design in perfect dark zero she looks like she looks like uh like a teenage kind of like young 20 21 22 year old woman uh, her design just look, has more flair to it. This one just looks like more realistic. I guess that's what they're going for. And that's what all the community is complaining about. Is that she looks like a man and shit. Like, you know. You know this fucking community. Uh, care more about fucking a female's look. Because they know they ain't getting no bitches. Than an actual fucking gameplay. Oh, my goodness. Anywho. We gonna move on from that. No release date, but most likely it's coming out next year. Uh, it's looking very promising. I, I wish this game nothing but the best. Because uh, they, they had us scared. Because based off of what, what we've been told about the uh, behind the scenes shit. Yeah, it's looking, it looks, it's looking kind of spooky. It was like a spooky, but it's, 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 looking, it's looking like it's going somewhere. Uh... Diablo is finally getting expansion uh, Diablo 4 uh, as the <laughs> the valley of hatred the vessel of hatred <laughs> oh my goodness when I first heard the name of that I, I actually bust out laughing and I wasn't the only one because uh, I was watching match uh, Maximilian stream um, a couple of uh, like yesterday and I didn't really realize that he <laughs> that he laughed at the shit too so i was i actually kind of found that funny but that's beside the point um that trailer was fucking creepy um that shit scared the fuck out of me and yeah i, I heard diablo 4 has gotten way better uh so i might want to check it out when i have time but yeah no release date no nothing on that so we're just gonna move on. Oh, actually, no, it does have a release date. My my apologies. It's actually coming out October the eighth, two thousand twenty-four. So it's coming out 
relatively soon. But yeah, like, uh, hopefully it's a fun game. Moving on, Fable reboot. Uh, honestly, I was very surprised when when this shit popped up. Um, but. Yeah, there's nothing I can really make of it. I noticed that they fixed the models, the the face model. So that's a plus. That's a plus that they fixed the like the model. But again, I have no idea what the fuck this game is. Again, like like don't know. I don't even know if this game's gonna have customization because it looks like you're just playing at least one character. Um, yeah, there's not much to go off of this game, so, moving on, uh, Flagpunk, uh, I think it's, this is the card game, uh, card, uh, uh, five versus five hero shooter, uh, honestly, I'm getting so sick and tired of these hero shooters, but I will say, this one did look interesting because they was using cards and their cards had special abilities like there was one where the person ripped the card and they and their opponents got big head mode and that the character they had was a sniper and it made it more easier for them to snipe people so i was like oh that's kind of interesting but yeah uh, it's coming out 2025 nobody cares um winter bowie uh this was the mouse that mouse game that had like uh that was like you have to like defend yourself uh and make yourself a home and shit i was like okay not interested but it is coming to game pass 2025 so it is what it is actually i have it on here i call it the trunk <laughs> on my notes I have it on here called trauma farming <laughs> but this time a rat <laughs> uh, that's funny uh, anywho moving on moving on to mixtape uh, mixtape I call this game uh, the DM DMCA <laughs> the video game because I don't know how anybody's supposed to like stream this fucking game because there's licensed music but yeah, it's like a coming of age story, but they have like licensed music and whatnot. And I'm just like, eh, all right, cool, I guess. Um, I It's coming to Game Pass, so you can check it out. Uh, and it's coming out 2025, so we'll see. Uh, Flight Simulator 2024. Uh, honestly, don't care about it, but congratulations. These shits always do well, it looks like you lost but one. yeah, it is what it is. Uh, it's coming out November the 19th, 2024, and it'll be on Game Pass, of course. Moving on, we are going to talk about Elder Scroll Online, and it's gotten to its 10th anniversary. And all the DLCs are free. So you can just go in and play the game. And just want to give the Elder Scroll Online community and team a, a round of applause. 10 years is a lot. So for it to be made it this far is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, there's going to be a new expansion called The Golden Road. And that comes out June 18th. Now... Here's something that had me tripping balls. I was like, what the fuck? And I literally have it on my on my notes. It says that. <laughs> uh, Life is Strange. Devil. <laughs> Basically, Life is Strange 2. The real Life is Strange 2. I was like, what the fuck? Max is back and they completely changed her design. <laughs> Although she is now an adult or or like 21, 19, I'm not too sure how old Max is. Um but I did look up some information on this game. 
Um, your the choices of the first game uh, will be uh, something that they will take into consideration. They said that all um, the two endings from the first game are both canon, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> How? Uh, because if you have played Life of Strange, those endings are drastically different. Um, they said that Max powers, she hasn't used her powers since the ending of those of the game, and that she's developed new powers. And I'm like, oh, interesting. And I just gotta say, and this is going off ta tangent. <laughs> Don't be friends with Max, bro. <laughs> Max will get you fucking killed, bro. <laughs> like, this girl has a death wish, bro. So, yeah. um, Everyone's back. Uh, so, it's going to be interested. I'm curious about how they're going to address the endings. But it seems like you could go into different realities. So, I'm curious. Because a lot of people... Some people chose like the ending I chose which was like let Max and Chloe go off into the sunset so it's like are, how is that gonna work I, I'm just confused on how this whole storyline is gonna work but it is what it is I'm gonna check it out it's gonna come for all the consoles except Switch I believe or no I think it's coming to the Switch but it's going to be coming October the 29th. Looking forward to playing that. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. This game looks really good. This game looks really good, but they're not showing me enough to get me excited. And I don't know. I, I guess if I was a huge Indiana Jones fan, I would have be head over to move for this game but i'm just kind of like oh this is all right so i don't know i'm, I'm just kind of like whatever with this game to be honest um but you know it's it is looking great and shout outs to troy baker like he's doing a great job with the voice acting um my boy actually sounds really good joel is sounding pretty good um moving on and it's come um, to this. Matt Breakers, we saw this before at the Game Awards. I mean, at the... Oh, not the Game Awards. At the Summer Game Fest. Um, honestly, it just looks like Zony and there's... Uh, beta is coming out later this year. It already looks good. Fallen Feathers. This game is fucking... Mwah. I'm... Wow. It, it, it's, it's a Souls game which I, I rolled my eyes but at the same time I was like you know what the art style looks really good and I'm like it's on Game Pass so you don't have to pay for it and I'm like hmm pretty damn cool I'll probably try it out because it's on Game Pass for free so why not um Avowed. Avowed. It looks like you lost another one. Avowed is looking good, but I don't know. I think like all their games are looking better than this, to be honest. But it don't look bad. But it's just an eight speaking. Um but it's Ascidian. I think it's Ascidian. The guys who did Fallout New Vegas. It's the Fallout New Vegas team, so and I'm like, it probably might be good. Most likely it will be. It's coming to Game Pass later this year. Then we got Atomic Fall, which is a new IP uh, coming coming to Game Pass. And I'm just kind of like, hmm, a new IP. Might check it out if it's interest. It looks sort of interesting. Um, but it, it, it's basically Fallout in Great Britain. <laughs> so, we'll see. Well, we, we shall see. Looks interesting. 
Assassin's Creed Shadow. Now, I'm not going to talk about my thoughts on this game because I have a lot to say. I'm going to make a separate video talking about Assassin's Creed Shadow. And basically, to give you guys a preview, honestly, this game is looking... It looking kind of a mixed bag so far for me, um, but I'll discuss more on that on a separate video. Um, when I make that video, a link will be in the description box below, so you can go check it out. Um, moving on. Oh, and that game comes out November the 18th. Oh, actually, November the 15th. My bad. November the 15th. Um, moving on, oh, Stalker 2, honestly, this game looks really good, despite the whole situation that's going on in Ukraine, I think that's kind of impressive that they're still putting out a video game, um, after what's going on there, and this game's looking really good, um, so, yeah. Moving on, uh, Sarah Bond came out and she announced uh, a few new Xboxes. She announced an all digital Series X and Series S um, that are white. And then she announced a special edition Series X that comes like the Xbox looks like a galaxy. And it's coming with, um, what you call it, uh, two terabyte SSD space. So if you still haven't owned a Series X, time to pick it up. But I would just say, what's the point when you can just get a gaming PC? But that's the side the point. Last but not least, Gears of War E-Day. All I have to say, as a Gears of War fan, of the original Gears of War, I'm talking about Gears of War 1 to 3, all I have to say is this, we will be there, we will be there, we will be there. that's all I gotta say, we will be there, that is all, that is all I got to say. As soon as this shit showed Marcus, a young Marcus, and fucking Dom, fucking Dom, I was like, bro, I was like, guys, it's a wrap. Fucking Phil Spencer, you did good. Pat yourself on the back, bro. This was fucking sick. Like, I wasn't, I was expecting Gears of War, like, six, but I was not expecting a prequel series. I was like, I was not expecting that shit at all. I knew a new Gears game was being worked on, but I did not know they had this shit going on. I, I'm so happy. I'm so fucking happy because I gotta be honest, the new Gears of War games have not been kill, killing it, and it's been really because of the characters. Like I didn't care for any of the newcomers, but man, fucking. Uh, uh, a prequel story that's talking about E Day. If anybody's ever read the the, the books, because I've read them, oh uh, E Day, oh man, it's it's gonna be a fucking it's gonna be so fucking epic. Um, one of the things I'm looking forward to seeing is more of the horror vibe. I feel like that's something that's been missing from the Gears of War franchise is that you know the horror aspect back in back in the, the the original trilogy they really brought a lot of horror vibes especially the first game the first game has a lot of horror elements and so i'm looking forward to seeing in this game them bring that back because this is like when shit hit the fans when the locusts started attacking and shit and they did not know how to deal with the enemy so it, I, i'm so looking forward forward to this like thank god thank rice that this is coming no release date but man take as much time as you need this is shit is gonna be fucking amazing bro 
with all that being said what do i think about the xbox showcase so i'll say this i still don't trust xbox um with any company that they own uh especially after the shutdown of tango gameworks that still hurts you know that 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 still stings um and phil spencer and and whatnot can get up here and and fool y'all but i i still don't really trust them that being said i can't look at a game like call of duty black ops 6 being free on game pass one of the biggest first person shooter games ever being free is not a win i can't look at something like doom the dark ages that is a fucking kick-ass first person shooter and be like that's not a win I can't look at any of the games they showed, even if they didn't interest me, like Exposition 33, South of Midnight, Gears of War, oh my goodness, Gears of War fucking E-Day, fucking, oh, the list goes on and on, Perfect Dark, all these great games that they showed off and not sit there and say, Xbox didn't do well, you know, Xbox killed it, they had the best presentation of all the conference and they should pat themselves on the fucking back they fucking killed it man they fucking nailed it so kudos to microsoft um when you're when your chips are down and when you're fucking bleeding out and whatnot you become the demon and that's what fucking xbox did they 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 fucking honed in and came through so it is what it is. Congratulations, Xbox. You had the best presentation. Better than PlayStation, I would say. So, there's that. Without further ado, I'm going to end the video here. If you're new to the channel, please comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the Xbox showcase. What games interest you? What was the most exciting game for you? Comment below, let me know. And as always, stay tuned. More videos are on the way. It's your boy, Mrs. Generate. Signing out. Have a good one.